in the last episode of this tournament thingy, the second one I've done. Al Jazz kicked the mighty ass of Korean Army, which was absolutely delightful to see. Uh, it could have been a longer, drawn-out battle, but he has proved himself a worthy adversary yet again on Company of Heroes. So, this time round, the factions are swapped. We have Al Jazz as the Wehrmacht, as the allies. We have the Korean Army. An unusual turn of events. The Koreans playing as the Americans. Uh, but, I did feel like I clarified this last time. Like I mentioned I'm in a big sport room. Like there's, There seems to be a mighty valuable... Valuable? Ooh, I could steal it and sell it onwards. No, I'm not going to do that. That's kind of mean to do to your friends. But it's full of like sports memorabilia, I guess is what you could call it. And I'm just saying I don't really hate sports. I just wish it had stuff like arena flippers and multi-ball pads. It would make football a lot more exciting, but that's just my choice. You know, like speedball for anyone that's played that game. Uh, in any case, uh, we have uh, basically going out for the fuel ammunition for both hearts. It's symmetrical. We like symmetrical. MG moving out to the center of the map. Will Korean army go and contest the map, or will he sort of venture uh, to like the northern and southern points to eventually move around and capture this fuel point here? Uh, it's a possibility. We'll leave it at that. It's too early to tell. Our engineers moving down to the munitions point there. Good stuff. And even our MG is going to go along and capture some stuff with some very slow, sneaky movement from this guy here. God damn it, Gary. Motorcycle comes out, which means we're going to see some motorcycle fall play between him and the MG. You know, all the pushing. Now, it does seem a little bit hard to actually do any sort of pushing uh, I mean, you, you, you can push, but you're essentially pushing them still into cover. Uh, there's so much heavy cover on offer. There's so many buildings that they could get in which have great windows of fire. But uh, failing that, moving into this area here seems a lot better for the motorcycle. However, the motorcycle has not scouted any single thing yet, so it's moving down to the south. Uh, when he does come down here, he'll notice that this border is lit up blue, so he'll definitely know that there is something down that south part. Uh, most likely... Anyone's good guess would be an engineer unit, so he can go and chase that down. Uh, he is going to do so, so uh, we'll need maybe an additional unit to go support that. It's stopped for now. Uh, but the engineers could easily move up back behind this wall, take a load of damage. Or oh, this one here. Uh, I believe this wall would actually be better, because you could easily move around uh, on either side of the wall. There goes the motorcycle, finally firing its payload inside of the engineers, and they are soaking it up. We're going to move around there. Oh, we're going to go for this wall down here. Here. I would still prefer that wall there, uh, but it is dangerously close uh, to the enemy base, and there are some reinforcements. We're going to bring a Pioneer Squad to help out this motorcycle, which should turn the tide of the battle. You can see the engineers doing quite a lot of damage against that motorcycle with that heavy cover at their disposal, but they should consider bailing out now. The motorcycle at 50% damage, but they are certainly not going to be able to take this without taking casualties, which is a manpower drain. Every little soldier that stays alive is sufficient manpower in the piggy bank. Our Volks are out here as well, and still no contestation in the middle yet. We have a rifleman squad moving out just down the left lake. This could be an opportunity where he is just gaining a flanking. Uh, you can see the position of the riflemen are all spread out. They are waiting to go. Just got to get that go code. But that MG is inside one of the most amazing buildings to put an MG inside when you conquer the middle area and they're all attacking from the north. So, uh, I mean, we could occupy this building for the allies. That would be okay. It's going to take a long time to defortify this position, though. In which case, like, one of the things that I've just not seen in for ages is a forward base. I, I, I don't think I've seen a forward base in this tournament yet. Which is kind of saddening, I know, they, I, they, they aren't the best thing to get. It's 260 manpower, and essentially, you can lose that all. We do have very early grenades from the likes of Korean Army. Our MG gets out of there just in time, but we have a pickup rifleman squad moving right around the back of them to make sure that nothing can really happen and set back down 
uh, suppressing any rival when you get but we do have a sniper and oh the motorcycle is lost our sniper has moved back the riflemen have turned round to fire at the Volks the Volks are taking heavy cover behind that well but it's just not as good as this thick wall here we have reinforcements moving in right behind the Volks squad and that should actually force a retreat here from El Jazz. El Jazz is mega confused. He's like, what the hell? Reverse question mark smiley face. Sad face from Korean army. I believe we just lost a sniper. It was the case. We lost that sniper right outside the base of Korean army. And of El Jazz rather. Korean army destroyed that sniper. Our pioneers are left to try and deal with the rifleman and i believe that is not going to happen let's get those pioneers out of there before we end up losing way way more than we really want to holy crackers on a stick and we should be able to get this victory point as well by the time uh, anyone comes back the pioneers did a fine job though they managed to get that down to three guys the sniper is back out uh the mg2 set down and the map territory is certainly conquered by Korean army he's gone infantry he's placing mines down to fortify his position so as soon as El Jazz comes back out into the battlefield he is going to be met with a horrifying amount of pain as he steps onto these mines hopefully not with uh, a sniper which he would be using as a scout if it's moved that far up but he's going to use that motorcycle to give him additional line of sight and then the sniper can fire from super long range attack mg has just managed to set back down the motorcycle is pushing making sure that our rivalman squad does ne not get too close to that mg does manage to get away does manage to set down the grenade taking away two volks grenadiers lives reinforcements have arrived traditional command and conquer saying oh i gotta get that on a soundboard i really want to get a soundboard with loads of awesome sounds uh, unfortunately though i don't have my music keyboard set up down here so i can't do that but that's definitely on the list of things i'll be doing in the future uh -huh. a grenade taking the life of one fine mg42 gunner another grenade trying to get a sniper but he is just dodging them like a trooper turns around takes a sh shit he takes a shit not a shot all right so El Jazz at the moment, uh, he does need to get a bit more territory, but he is doing not too bad. Not as bad as this motorcycle. This is the second motorcycle which has been lost. El Jazz! It's time for Minesweepers. In all fairness though, uh, that is the first mine he has hit. This is the signal now that there are going to be more mines in the future. There is possibly uh, infantry selected as his opponent's doctor. And we have a supply yard down. Uh, allowing us, oh, we have no triage center two uh, Jeep coming out here as well to deal with that sniper in the base of El Jazz. We have that Krieg Barracks down there. I uh, wonder what his first buy is going to be out of that. I mean, I would be safe with the Grenadier squad as well. Uh, he could use the infantry if you look. He's only got one Volk squad out here. He's lost motorcycles, he's lost a sniper. So having more infantry presence would be great, but he is still fighting a, a very much outnumbered battle. So he needs some kind of leverage. A Grenadier squad, perhaps a half track, could really help him out in giving him some field presence. We have the <laughs> engineers, which managed to hit a mine there. Great placement from El Jazz, but not the ideal target. We would like to instead use those mines against the riflemen. We have sandbags down here as well, uh, being used by Korean army against the Volk squad in the building here with the sniper giving very close combat support we have a second rifleman squad moving into that building uh, gonna fan around the back not to be attracted by any of the riflemen in the rear windows the MG set down is being flanked by a flamethrower excellent mine positioning from Korean army however suppressing two of the advancing rifleman squads we had a grenade inside this building I believe the rifleman moving right round the back they need to support these troops here get rid of that mg that is absolutely incredible play from korean army we had uh was that two sniper shots i heard there one sniper shot maybe misfiring no it is just one sniper our rifleman squad right down from the southern sectors of the map now they're gonna try and hold position here as these two suppressed riflemen from earlier are gonna back them up grenades galore yet again 
forcing these guys to move out of position or wholeheartedly retreat. And now we have such an outnumbered situation for this Grenadier squad. As I said earlier, even with one Grenadier squad, they are fighting a two outnumbered situation. We have no field presence. We need to get more infantry, but that's going to reduce our chances of being able to field a pack 38 when we need it. However, with Grenadiers, if we save up a bit of manpower, uh, uh, munitions rather, we can get those Panzer Shreks. And they aren't... I, I mean, they, they work against Greyhounds, but it is easy to dodge like Panzer Shreks uh, using the ability of Microwing. But it's a counter. It buys you time to get that essential Pack 38 or tech up and get a Puma or something uh, with the 75 munitions upgrade for a better <laughs> cannon. Or a Stug, of course. Stug's always grand. Our mines are trying to be placed at the doors there, but they got interrupted. Veto one for this six-kill rifleman squad. The force is now coming out for El Jazz, and he will be able to capture some of this territory. I don't see by. any mines in the area here. And that guy's talking to me. I, I wonder if I can turn his voice off. I kind of like his soothing voice, though. Uh, I always picture... Uh, oh, God, it's been a while since I've explained this one. Our rifleman here... Should be able to hold out for a little bit, but they will most likely retreat from this engagement after that grenade. Oh, slightly running back into it, however. The Krauts are going after our point. That commander guy there, right? I always feel like the co-commander could have a much more vital role in the game. Uh, I can't remember what it is that I wanted him to say, though, but give you a little bit more battlefield analysis. Maybe even like on easy mode, he, he gives you sort of like tips. Like, oh, there's lots of infantry presence here and hardly no riflemen. We should perhaps retreat our soldiers. Like, a little bit more engaging. So, uh, for example, let's say a, a Sherman tank pops up here. Uh, the commander will say, oh, there's a Sherman tank on the battlefield. Just like the, for the first one. It gives you a head this up. Uh, and then sort of gives you a tip. Like, um, well, we don't have enough troops in the area. I suggest retreating or... Uh, perhaps stall until you can build a Panzer Shrek. You know, he actually gives you tips. Not kind of like playing for you. Just a little bit of... I don't know. It, it's, it's more feeling, I would say. And it feels like cheating, giving you tips. But players of advanced natures will be able to do their own things. Just like normal. And, of course, players that are on the new scale will learn. So... I, I just like that idea very much. In fact, I like it less now. And also, there's something in my eye. Get that thing out of my eye. Uh, by the way, I just woke up as well, so that is sleep in my eye. I mean, you've probably heard me say before that, oh, I've just woke up. Ooh, a bit of back capturing with a barbed wire. Uh, I've just woke up. I decided to do cast. Well, this is literally a bed that I'm sat on, so I, I, I haven't left the bed yet. I haven't even put some trousers on. I'm just in my boxes. But i got a pillow here, making sure that I cover up any nudity. All good stuff for me. The Greyhound is locking down this area, unlike what a Greyhound usually does. But until we get a good counter to this, here we go. There's that Pack 38 rolling up. It can just happily sit here uh, until something gets a Panzer Shrek. Something gets a Panzer Shrek, or this arrives in time. You can see Korean Army is a little scared now by the whole mighty force coming out. We have Panzerfaust at the ready as well for the Volksgrenadiers. Maybe a possibility, but we want to wait until the Greyhound is going to be a certain kill until we fire that. Otherwise, it's just a waste of munitions. Our riflemen taking position. Uh, they could have a little bit better positioning as well. This is an excellent place for them to fight in. Lots of cover, lots of buildings for them to use. However, the majority of their forces have decided to retreat back to the Greyhound on that side. In fact, they're splitting up all over the place, which is allowing Aljaz to fight so many battles. He's fighting two now, and he's got the numbers advantage as well. Uh, we had a Rifleman squad die here earlier. I hope this is not going to be the same. Yeah, he gets away there just in time. Uh, Greyhound moving out into the center, using the buildings as a shot blocker. Our Pack 38 has a very narrow field of view, and it's already fired as well. So we know that's there. We don't have to actually expose our Greyhound. We should be able to quite happily poke our head round this corner, firing our 50 cal and main cannon at the Volk squad without alerting ourselves to that Pack 38. A rifleman just taking cover. I'm surprised they actually managed to win and secure this area. 
There was a lot of infantry from Aljaz, and he just didn't actually get it. I, I don't know why. We kind of missed that one. Uh, sure to find it out what happened there later on. Or at the same time, really, with a multi count effect. Yeah, I'm doing the multi count again, and that's fun to do. A Greyhound is taking some heat, like he has just said. Our Volks and Grenadiers. Oh, Grenadiers inside of the building with the Blastoise hold. Uh, Huns are taking the territory. <laughs> oh, makeshift window, I would call it. Our Pack 48 cloaking again takes a shot. That's a good, nice shot. We need some more, though. Maybe the Volks can get a Panzerfaust off. One more. You can see that heavy reinforced armor on the Greyhound allows you to take losing ground out there. three shots most of the time, if not all of the time. Uh, whereas without it, it'll take two. And two is pretty much dangerous because usually what will happen is you'll run into a mine. Uh, that happens like 20% of the time, I'd say. With the Greyhound, you'll run into a mine uh, just They're going overextending to be, being ours. too aggressive, too late on in the game, I would say, for mines to be placed. Uh, well, too early on for mines to be placed. But you think it's too late, too early. You drive in, it gets blown up. You're like, ah, oh, I didn't think you'd have mines down then. And all of a sudden, a pack 48 just appears. One shot at your Greyhound, which cannot escape. And poof, magically gone. Or Panzer Faust or Panzer Shreks. Uh, usually you don't see Panzer Shreks in that stage of the game. But our sniper from Korean Army is out, taking two kills already. Where is our Axis sniper? He is here. 21 kills. He should have no troubles taking this newbie recruit rookie status enemy sniper. But that's not how it works. He's already got better than C. Uh, one upgraded for him. There goes the flamethrower rifleman combination. No B A R S yet. Bars. But uh, don't need them. We just certainly don't need them. Our flamethrower preventing any enemy infantry from actually hanging around in heavy cover. And of course, this Pack 48 also constitutes heavy cover too, so those guys burn pretty darn fast. And we can steal that Pack 48 as well. That's that's a bit of a blunder for Aljaz. Uh, Eljaz perhaps shouldn't have left that behind. That was a mistake. Because now we don't have anything to really counter the wonderful, delightful Greyhound here. Yep. He needs some repairs. We can buy another one, though, or we can go to our Tier 3 Sturm Armory and get ourselves a end-all of end-all for any allied armor except the Persian. The Stug. The Stug is a fantastic little tank. The Mod is also a fantastic little tank. Oh, I really hope we see some Panther Elite again. I, I want to see some Marta Freeze being so inappropriately used again. Our Sniper, like he said, taking fire, being chased by the Volks. Uh, perhaps some MP40s would be nice and delightful to see. I wouldn't mind seeing some of them on some Volks. It's been a while. Ooh! Ooh, wow. Explosion there happening. Uh, but don't you worry there. We shall survive and charge right into the enemy. The, oh, bringing out a mortar as well. Okay, okay. What's he, where's he going to sit this mortar down, I wonder? Now, we do have a shot blocker here. However, it's not uncommon. Like, just assessing the, the way this map has gone. Aljaz has moved up into this area quite a lot, so I wouldn't say that mortar is entirely safe. Enemy it is quite down. likely that we will ooh, kill ourselves... That wasn't a sniper, was it? It kind of was. It kind of was a sniper. And we should be able to see his gun, actually, but uh, perhaps on his back. He is holding his stomach. Maybe a medic can go save him and turn him into a regular grenadier, but no medic bunkers out just yet. I've not seen them in quite a while as well, I feel. And even though they were like clearly in the last game, but can never... I mean, you, you've got to savor the flavors of medics once you can, because Company of Heroes 2 doesn't have it. Another mine being scouted and shot there. I see what's going on now. We are just scouring and shooting those mines, because we cannot be bothered to actually pick them up and clear them. Perhaps you should gain munitions for clearing them, just as a little advantage to do that. I don't know. Uh, like, I wouldn't go any higher than five munitions for clearing mines, but now right from an a little bit of stall tactics right here. The victory points are very, very close together for a currently 20-minute game. 425 to Korean Army, 358 to Aljaz. That Puma uh, seems like a bit of an odd choice, by the way. It has hit a mine. It has received uh, some engine damage, so it is very, very slow now. A sticky grenade, perhaps that was what caused the engine damage instead of a mine. 
Uh, Iva is... Oh, oh, no. Let the Greyhound take the shot. Let the Greyhound take the veteran seat. And we have Neville Buffers out here now. Oh, what a great shot from the Neville right directly on top of that Rifleman squad. It hurt. It was many, many pains against their health bars. And now you can see, like I said earlier, this area not uncommon for Eljas to move into. He will go ahead, move straight into there, and then actually just back away. We do have a Panzer Shrek uh, for this Grenadier squad. Currently with two kills. Uh, Volk squad, ten kills. They are showing up. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh, a little bit of woohooing there from the American forces. It's a little bit intolerant of them to actually do that whilst people are dying. We now have that Stug fielded, which is really important for them to get out because that Stug is going to be an essential necessity for dealing with that goddamn pesky Greyhound, which currently only a measly five kills. It's 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 been out in the battlefield for quite a long time now, and it's just like lazing around. What the hell have you been doing, 50 cal gunner? Uh, randomly firing over here here comes the stuck now not supported by any infantry currently however the same is true for the greyhound as well let's take a few shots uh hopefully not running into any mines not being lord you can see the mines going down there from the engineers of korean army and uh that'll just prevent any further advancements that'll also help out the mortar as well that'll be able to uh, perhaps be used as bait not in the right position to be used as bait, though. I would say behind the church. That is a very common place there to put a mortar. Uh, it works very, very well and effectively. The flamethrowers and mortars are going to totally just destroy those guys inside that building. They do get out, however. The BARs are up. The Neville is firing. The Neville is most likely going to fire on the location, which is saturated with enemy infantry. Ho oh ho! Nicely done, sir! We do hit a mine with that Neville Verva and the Greyhound. What have I said before, Anuki TV viewers? Do not be anywhere near your mines. And you can see Aljaz is way too happy about this. He's like, oh, you, you Greyhound's almost destroyed. And a second one. Woohoo! Jeesh. Okay, okay, so. This game is a perfect representation. There goes the propaganda war. It sends those troops flying out. Aljaz looks like he's making a comeback into this game. Heavy infantry fighting on the north side of the map. So we're going to take cover behind that wall and turn uh, it against these riflemen with the bars. However, our Volks Grenadiers are pretty damn beat up. So are our Grenadiers as well. They still have 13 kills. They just got to get a few more. They are not supported by that Volk squad anymore. And I don't believe Aljaz quite knows it. He is setting them back up. Grenade over there. Doesn't do too much damage. It's looking like a really great. They're great. Oh, I saw some Frosties earlier. Um, yesterday, last night in the shop. I had to buy cereal. Because cereal is a good cheap meal. So we've gone from Eljaz totally decimating Korean army to... Oh, is he going to capture his Pack 48 maybe? Uh, he doesn't have any four-man plus squads out. So that is highly unlikely. Two stokes out here now. Perhaps a bit of a overblown... I, I, I suppose. Uh, if we can get these up to Vet 2, we'll get those Gunners on top. And they will be assisting in the infantry battles. Our Neville was trying to predict the location of the riflemen as they ran across here. Unfortunately, it was an under overshot. One of the two... Uh, it kind of moved to the side, so neither. It was uh, over under side shot. But uh, nicely dodged there from Korean Army. He knew that dodging it upwards and downwards was more likely. It's a way, way smart thing to do, by the way. If you hear that Neville, what people tend to do is either fire behind you, expecting you to retreat, or in front of where you're going, expecting you to advance. Not many people expect you to move up or down. It's like the dodging the train thing. You don't run on the tracks to avoid the train. You just jump to the side of it. So, uh, here comes the counter-assault now from Korean Army. It's going to be tough. He didn't have a real solid counter to the Stugs, apart from that Pack 38 out there. Oh, we lose a Rifleman squad. We do have a bar drop there. We do have an MG that we can go cut. And a speed-hacking Marine. Jeez. Get back there. But, uh... It's one of those unusual things where, like, oh, why is he bringing Stugs out of the field? Like, there's only infantry. You should count infantry infantry. But 
Although that is, has some drawbacks. Uh, whilst he has done that, would I hear more explosions? Uh, Stug's running over some more, more mines as our engineers are just trying to backwards. <laughs> oh, nicely done. I don't know why this Stug was here in the first place, but we definitely need more minesweepers for the likes of El Jazz. They are absolutely burdening him. Although the ones from before actually helped him take out that Greyhound. But coming back to this, damn it, and it's not working out the way that El Jazz has planned. If your enemy has no counter to tanks and tanks kill infantry, then just get loads of tanks. As long as you've got infantry to capture points, that's all you really need. But the same can hold true as well if your enemy only has tanks and you just field infantry, you're going to have much more epic capturing powers. Holy crap, these guys move very incredibly fast on rows. We should remember that for my noggin in future. We have two Nevels out now, two. The battle continues in the middle with the MG42 from Korean Army captured from Al Jazz earlier on. Sets itself down in the road, firing against this building. Not going to be happy fun times inside of there. We need reinforcements, and the reinforcements come in the flavor of grenadiers. Chucking a grenade inside of that building. The flamethrowers hop out and retreat. Now it is time for Al Jazz to make his move back into the center of the back. We have huge back and forth action here. The Pack 38 uh, and an AT gun out here now. We have a solid counter to the Stooks on the field. Perfect for this map as well, as there's not much opportunity for any vehicles to move around the site. Not that you would ever, ever consider doing that with a Stug. A Stug is not a flanking tank. A Stug is a put it down in the middle, sit it there, and just let it do its thing. It'll work fine. Bar's moving back over, and Mortar has moved too far up. That was just not needed, unless he wants to lose command points. Our Nebel firing down on the locations of the packs. That's exactly what we want to be doing, although this is just way, way too far away from the packs. Uh, it is nice to see that there is scattered AT gun and pack 38. Where is that AT gun, actually? It's moved all the way back here, in fact. Uh, just a quick look at the map. We roll. have kind of equal footing. We have, like, two tanks out. One tank out uh, for Al Jazz. We have only one more AT gun for the likes of Korean Army, but he might be able to recapture that if he can win this battle. He is chasing after those Panzer Shreks first and foremost. Perhaps wanting to get our Panzer Shrek dropped. That will also help him out. Uh, not only stealing tech from his opponents, but gaining it him for himself. So uh, we do have ah two tanks. They did manage to get that repaired after all. An interesting MG bunker down here from Korean Army. Uh, it should. Everybody knows the counter to an MG Bunker is to reverse up to it. it it's based on facial recognition. If you move and reverse into it, it won't shoot you. Although, this one kind of did. Storm was clearly looking in his direction. We have a Stug tank charging ahead. He is going to blow up his own Pack 38 because he wants to be hit into the side with that anti-tank gun, which if only it was sporting some massive anti-penetration, and anti-penetration? Anti anti-tank penetration rounds. Um, it could have done a lot more damage there. The Nebel firing that taking a huge chunk of that building. That's what we like to see. Cha-ching! Building destruction. Enemy is Perhaps falling on itself points. at some point in this game. We are 28 minutes in. Ooh, I'm loving it. Our AT gun managed to get out of there. Do we have, we have a tank a factory a that point. would be coming out anytime soon? This could many helps. Uh, can only see perhaps an additional AT gun would be useful. Or oh, yes, save up for that off map combat group. This is what we need. We have, oh, it already used in fact. We have lots of AT guns. More riflemen bringing out to the field. That's not too bad. We can work with this. It's not the greatest thing. We would love to see some tanks in the mix. But three AT guns overall. Two of them from the off-man combat group. You can't argue with those results. That's going to be hard for the Nebels to keep locking those down consistently. If we can reinforce our... Uh, <laughs> our riflemen. Ooh. Then it shouldn't be too much of a problem to actually constantly pick those AT guns and fire them when we need. Uh, in fact, we could see these really aggressive AT gun pushes now. You see Korean Army again fanning out. And what did I tell you? This guy loves infantry, no tanks yet again. He just wants to fight these battles in the most fun way that he sees. And that is infantry all the way. He's keeping his flamethrowers mixed in with his riflemen and now we're going to see awesome artillery action all across the board as everyone is taking casualties 
and a big retreat there from the center, but we still have the side flanks raring to go. Riflemen's on each north and southern flank. They can't handle this by themselves, and I think that was an opportunity there for Aljaz to actually move up here. Uh, we have some infantry fighting down on the south side of the map. Uh, another squad down here, out of control. Puma no longer down. able to hold down this victory point, and only 172 left for Aljaz. He is being put in a bit of a bind now. He's setting some reinforcements down from the south as his Stugs try and hold this northern side down. It's not going to work, though, as the Stug crashes and plows into its own pioneers. They are just thrown inside of the building. You can see them inside there. Ho oh, ho! And now a howitzer strike being placed onto the Nevils, but they are able to run so super fast. Oh, long miss of a shot there the stuck is dying as well holy moly that rifleman squad there picking up the kill uh, with the at gun in fact i think that might have been the at gun gaining the kill it is certainly in range that was one heck of an incredible push from korean army which is one of the reasons why he's such a fantastic player he is doing things which you wouldn't see from other players the bar picked up again from the rifleman a little late on the retreat there However, the retreat is done. We whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Our forces are taking casualties. <laughs> oh, we don't want to lose our bet two squad. However, we have plenty more on the field. Likewise, though, another Puma hits the battlefield. We got to be careful with this Puma. It is micro intensive. And when we get all right later on the stage of the game, we have so much stuff to actually control supply lines are broken you will find microing that puma a lot harder early on in the game you don't have so much it's not too critical uh units will survive a lot longer however later on into the game it could be so much as a howie to strike you don't see that red smoke on all sudden pow 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 it's bad news for your infantry all of a sudden microing that puma didn't seem too effective here comes the neville strike yet again German on our own territory. motorcycle Please, Elchaz, don't throw the game away! Don't ever do that. We're running, we're charging, we are getting sticky grenades, we are getting flamed, but we're gonna get... We're not gonna get a sniper. Bet free for the sniper, by the way. 23 kills and fireball. Uh, Elchaz, rather, speaking in... Uh, ooh, uh, mm, shapes. He's speaking in shapes. Not familiar with shape language. Here comes a second Neville strike. Where is the location which you have decided upon for the fire of the skies to fall and descend the upon the enemies? Uh, it's over here. Look at the scatter. Oh, there we go. The church building is absolutely destroyed. We cannot man this now. Uh. <coughs> ah. There we go. I had too much congestion in my nose. You'll notice there's a tone change in my voice. I'm getting a blocked nose now. Usually what happens is, uh, 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 I just swallowed snot. Uh, <laughs> help me. The I'm a caster, get me out of here. Down. Uh, regardless. Uh, never mind, Anuki, stagger on. M10 Wolverine hits the field from the wonderful off-map combat group. And it should be really effective against these Pumas. Like that M10 can just go all in on these Pumas. It is not going to be a problem. You can see Eljaz is here is like, yes, I got this. I'm going to charge it behind those AT guns, and they're going to have nothing left to counter my pupils. They're all of a sudden out of nowhere. Rangers and an M10 Wolverine. And some more speed hacks. Oh! Like, what the hell's going on? El Jazz. Like, it seemed like such an amazing call, but he did not encounter for the random chance of off-map combat group delivering him such good stuff to the battlefield, as well as those Rangers, too. After not seeing any of those units on the battlefield, it was, you know, a, a, a call which I would have made myself. Many of the players would have probably made as well. But uh, he does manage to take care of that M10 Wolverine. He does Enemy manage to take care down. of the AT gun for now. For now, however, but he's only got 94 points remaining on the clock. And it doesn't look like he's sporting too many units. Apart from the King Tiger robot in disguise, it's going to start running over these bushes. Can this make a difference? Can it hell? I think it's all too late. This thing is gonna really lock down his own manpower. Like, we'll see if he's able to reinforce his only freaking unit on the field. 
Uh, in fact, no, he's got two. We got the Grenadiers out here as well, capturing that victory points because we need them. The Neville shots are going to be crucial. And he's going to fire it on the victory point to allow him some more time. That's what he needs. And uh, does send them off. Do manage to save that. The Rangers are going to move in and try and take the victory point and put some more time pressure onto El Jazz. Moving inside the building, you can see all of the stall tactics trying to be used here. He has to get outside of the building, though, because of that grenade at King Tiger. Very, very careful. However, this is not the time to be careful. We need to be extremely risky. Like, at this point on, we're saying to ourselves, I don't believe I'm going to win. The mines are down there to lock down the advancements of that King Tiger. Excellent opportunities there. Seeked and totally got hold of by Korean Army. But Aljaz is throwing in the towel. Congratulations, Korean Army. It is one for one now. We're going to have a last best of three game between the two. And I'm looking forward to it because that is one of the games for the books in this tournament. A definite highlight. I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Please remember. Oh, in fact, if you don't want to subscribe to the channel, you can indeed subscribe to this tournament only through the shows thing. Look for the shows that I have. Just subscribe to the show and you will receive an update whenever this show is updated with a new episode. So you don't get spammed by the likes of Men of War and stuff like that. The stuff that you hate. That's okay. It doesn't matter. I'm fine with that too. So, on that note, I hope you've enjoyed. You're still around here for some reason. I love you guys. Sayonara, I'm a nookie. <laughs> <laughs>